Right now, somewhere over the Nevada desert, there's an aircraft moving so fast it could cross the Atlantic in under 90 minutes. Mach 6, 4,000 miles per hour, twice the speed of the legendary SR-71 Blackbird. The Air Force won't confirm it exists, Lockheed Martin stays silent, but the evidence is everywhere. Classified budget overruns, new facilities at Skunk Works, eyewitness reports near Palmdale. The SR-72 isn't science fiction anymore, and what this machine can do will change everything you thought you knew about air superiority. Stay with me, because what you're about to discover has been hiding in plain sight. The SR-71 Blackbird retired in 1998. For over two decades, America had no high-speed reconnaissance aircraft capable of penetrating the world's most dangerous airspace. Satellites are vulnerable, drones are slow, stealth fighters can be detected, but speed? Speed is the ultimate defense. And that's exactly what the SR-72 brings back to the table. But this time, it's not just faster, it's smarter, it's unmanned, and it carries weapons. Here's where things get interesting. In 2013, Aviation Week broke a story that sent shockwaves through the defense community. Lockheed Martin's secretive Skunk Works division was developing a hypersonic successor to the Blackbird. They called it the SR-72. The target speed? Mach 6. The mission? Intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and strike capabilities, all without risking a single pilot's life. Now, you might be thinking, that was over a decade ago. Where is it? If you think America's military innovation is slowing down, type no way in the comments. Let us know what you think about this incredible technology. That's the billion dollar question. And the answer is more complex than you might expect. Because developing an aircraft that can fly at six times the speed of sound isn't just difficult, it's pushing the absolute limits of what's physically possible with current technology. Let's talk about the engine first, because this is where the real magic happens. Every jet engine has a speed limit. Your typical fighter jet maxes out around Mach 2. The SR-71 Blackbird hit Mach 3.2 using specially designed engines. But to reach Mach 6, you need something completely different. Something that's never been done before on an operational aircraft. Enter the turbine-based combined cycle engine, or TBCC for short. Here's how it works. During takeoff and initial acceleration, the SR-72 uses conventional turbofan engines. These get the aircraft up to about Mach 2.5 already faster than almost anything else in the sky. But then comes the transition, and this is the hard part. At Mach 3, the scramjet kicks in. A scramjet has no moving parts, no turbines, no compressors. It uses the aircraft's own forward speed to compress incoming air. Fuel gets injected into supersonic airflow, Combustion happens, and the aircraft rides its own shockwave to hypersonic speeds. The problem? Traditional turbojets stop working efficiently around Mach 2.2. Scramjets don't work well below Mach 4. There's a gap, a dead zone where neither engine operates effectively. Bridging that gap has been the holy grail of hypersonic flight for 50 years, and Lockheed Martin figured it out. Working with engine manufacturer Aerojet Rocketdyne, they developed a dual-mode ramjet that can operate in that transition zone. Both engines share a common inlet and exhaust nozzle. The aircraft seamlessly transitions from turbofan power to ramjet to scramjet as it accelerates. In 2014, NASA awarded contracts totaling nearly $2 million to study this exact propulsion concept. By 2017, Lockheed's executive vice president announced that testing was complete on the hypersonic propulsion system. But there's another challenge, heat. At Mach 6, air friction generates temperatures exceeding 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The leading edges of the aircraft experience thermal loads that would melt conventional aluminum in seconds. 
The SR-72 requires ceramic matrix composites, carbon-carbon materials similar to what's used on spacecraft heat shields, advanced thermal management systems with active cooling. Every component must be engineered to survive sustained hypersonic flight. And here's what makes this even more impressive. The SR-71 could only maintain its top speed for short bursts. The SR-72 is designed for sustained hypersonic cruise, hours, not minutes, at Mach 6. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Does this aircraft actually exist? The Air Force has never officially confirmed the SR-72 program. Lockheed Martin talks about it in vague terms, but they've never said, yes, we built this aircraft and it flies. However, the evidence is compelling. In 2021, Lockheed opened a massive new production facility at Skunk Works headquarters in Palmdale, California. Building 648, it's equipped with advanced digital engineering systems, artificial intelligence-driven manufacturing, and robotic assembly. The Skunk Works workforce exploded from fewer than 2,500 employees in 2018 to over 5,500 by 2023. You don't double your workforce for theoretical research. Then there are the financial disclosures. In July 2024, Lockheed Martin's quarterly earnings report revealed a $45 million cost overrun in an unnamed classified aeronautics program. Total losses since 2022, $335 million. The company noted these overruns stemmed from complex design and systems integration challenges. Sound familiar? Those are the exact same challenges faced during SR-71 development. And there's more. In September 2017, multiple witnesses near Palmdale reported seeing an unusual aircraft accompanied by T-38 chase planes. The aircraft didn't match any known profile. It was roughly the size of an F-22 fighter, and it was moving fast. What they likely saw was the flight research vehicle, a single-engine demonstrator about 60 feet long designed to prove the TBCC propulsion concept works. Lockheed stated in 2018 that this demonstrator would fly by 2025. We're there now, and while nothing has been confirmed, the pieces are falling into place. But let's talk about why this matters. Why spend billions developing a hypersonic spy plane when we have satellites and stealth aircraft? Because the battlefield is changing. China and Russia have invested heavily in anti-satellite weapons. They can shoot down or disable reconnaissance satellites. America's eyes in the sky are vulnerable. Advanced air defense systems like Russia's S-500 and China's HQ-19 can track and engage stealth aircraft. The F-22 and F-35 are incredible machines, but they're not invisible. Not anymore. Speed changes the equation. A hypersonic aircraft reduces reaction time to almost nothing. By the time an enemy radar detects the SR-72, it's already gone. Air defense systems can't track it. Missiles can't catch it. Travel time from the continental United States to anywhere in Asia? 90 minutes. The SR-72 can surveil the target and be back in friendly airspace before the enemy even knows it was there. And unlike satellites that follow predictable orbits, the SR-72 can change course. It can loiter. It can respond to real-time intelligence. But here's where it gets even more interesting. The SR-72 isn't just a spy plane. Unlike its predecessor, which carried only cameras and sensors, the SR-72 is armed. It's designed to carry Lockheed Martin's hypersonic strike weapon, a hypersonic missile that can be launched from hypersonic speeds. Imagine this scenario. The SR-72 detects a high-value target deep in enemy territory, a mobile missile launcher, a command center. The aircraft doesn't need to wait for approval chains. It engages immediately, 
The hypersonic missile hits the target minutes later, and the SR-72 is already 500 miles away. That's a new kind of warfare, one where speed and precision combine to create an unstoppable advantage. Our military has always pushed the boundaries of what's possible. From the P-51 Mustang to the F-22 Raptor, American air power has consistently stayed ahead of adversaries. The men and women who developed these technologies, who put their lives on the line for our freedom, deserve the best tools available. The SR-72 represents that commitment. It's about maintaining the ability to protect American interests anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. But building this aircraft requires solving problems that have never been solved before. The mode transition between turbofan and scramjet is incredibly complex. Get it wrong and the engine could flame out at Mach 3. Test failures have reportedly occurred. Engineers describe these as mode transition anomalies. Thermal management is another constant challenge. Active cooling systems pump fuel through the airframe to absorb heat. Ceramic composites protect critical areas, but if any system fails at Mach 6, the consequences are catastrophic. Then there's fuel. The SR-71 used JP-7, a specialized fuel with an extremely high flash point. The SR-72 likely requires something even more advanced something that can handle even higher temperatures while providing the energy density needed for hypersonic flight. And that brings us to the money question. Is the SR-72 worth it? The $335 million in reported losses is just what's been disclosed. The actual program cost is almost certainly in the billions. Some estimates put it at $11 billion or more. But consider what you're getting an aircraft that can reach any point on Earth in under two hours, that can penetrate the most heavily defended airspace without being touched, that can gather intelligence and strike targets before enemies even know it's there. The SR-71 flew for over three decades. It never lost an aircraft to enemy action, not once, despite flying missions over the Soviet Union, North Vietnam, the Middle East, and other hostile territories, its speed kept it safe. The SR-72 promises this same invulnerability, but with capabilities the Blackbird never had. China isn't standing still. They've unveiled the Yunsing, a hypersonic passenger aircraft with clear military applications. Russia has the U-71 hypersonic glide vehicle. India successfully tested their hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle at Mach 6.5 in 2024. The hypersonic race is on, and America needs to win it. Here's what makes the SR-72 different. It's reusable. It takes off from conventional runways. It doesn't need rocket boosters or special launch systems. It can fly multiple missions per day if needed. And it has the range to operate globally without forward basing. So where does the program stand today? Multiple reports from April and July 2025 suggest Lockheed Martin could finalize a prototype by the end of this year. If that's accurate, we might see flight testing begin in 2026. The operational aircraft could enter service by 2030. But there's reason for skepticism, too. The Air Force faces tough budget decisions. The B-21 Raider bomber is entering production. The next-generation Air Dominance Fighter program needs funding. Money is tight. Some defense analysts believe the SR-72 might be delayed into the mid-2030s. Others think the technology demonstrator will fly soon, but the full operational aircraft is still years away. But here's what we know for certain. Lockheed Martin has invested billions in hypersonic research. They've built new facilities. They've hired thousands of engineers. They've tested propulsion systems. They've solved thermal management challenges. All of that work doesn't just disappear. Even if the SR-72, as originally envisioned, doesn't fly immediately, the technologies developed for this program will shape the next generation of American air power. The same thing happened with the SR-71. Many technologies developed for the Blackbird found their way into other programs. The SR-71's legacy went far beyond the aircraft itself. And that's the real story here.
not just one aircraft, but the entire ecosystem of innovation it creates. The engineers learning to solve impossible problems, the manufacturers developing new materials and processes. This is how America maintains its technological edge, by pushing boundaries, by attempting what others say can't be done. The Blackbird was called impossible too. Engineers in the 1950s said you couldn't build a Mach 3 aircraft. They said the materials didn't exist. Kelly Johnson and his team at Skunk Works proved them wrong. They invented new manufacturing techniques. They created an aircraft so advanced that 60 years later, it still holds speed records. The same spirit drives the SR-72 program, the same determination, the same refusal to accept limitations. That's the American way. That's what our military does best. So is the SR-72 real? Based on everything we've seen, the answer is yes. Some version of this aircraft exists or is very close to existing. The program is real, the technology works, and sooner or later we'll see the son of Blackbird fly. And when it does, when that first prototype breaks the sound barrier and keeps accelerating past Mach 5, past Mach 6, into true hypersonic flight, it will represent more than just an engineering achievement. It will represent American innovation, determination, and the commitment to maintaining peace through strength. Because the best way to avoid war is to be so advanced, so capable, so far ahead that potential adversaries don't even try. The SR-72 is that deterrent, it's that capability, it's that edge, and it's coming. If you found this deep dive into America's most secret program fascinating, hit that like button and subscribe for more coverage of the technologies keeping us safe. The future of flight is being written right now in the desert skies of Nevada. The SR-72 program proves one thing beyond doubt. American ingenuity is alive and well. Our military continues to push boundaries, and the men and women developing these systems are ensuring that the United States Air Force remains the most capable air power on Earth. The son of Blackbird is ready to fly, and when it does, the world will never be the same.